It is now with great honor that I introduce the first of the Harvard Medical School Class of 2022 speakers, Samuel Lyon. Samuel was raised in Texas and attended the United States Military Academy at West Point, where he received a degree in civil engineering. He entered the Army as an infantryman and served three tours in Afghanistan as a platoon leader and company commander. The Army is where he discovered a passion for caring for others. Arriving at Harvard Medical School with his wife and three kids, Samuel is known as the old man of the class, who's full of awful dad jokes, but always has a kind listening ear and a kind word for anyone who needs it. When he's not studying, Sam can be found playing with his three kids, supporting his local community with food rescue organization, and fundraising by riding the Pan Mass Challenge or running in the Boston Marathon. The Lyon family will be moving to Georgia, where Samuel will return to the Army for residency in emergency medicine at Augusta University. His remarks are titled, What is Success? Please join me in welcoming Samuel Lyon. Thank you. May all the glory go to God. And thank you, Raquel Sofia, for that very kind introduction. Distinguished guests, members of the faculty, family, loved ones, friends and fellow graduates, I'd like to start by saying thank you. Not only have you given me a great honor by allowing me to share a few thoughts this afternoon, but the weeks of nausea that I've gone through in anticipation of this afternoon's address has caused me to lose weight and transform this dad bod into a grad bod. <laughs> Delivering an address on graduation day is a great responsibility, or so I thought, until I tried remembering my undergrad commencement day speaker. Reflecting on the speech given that day has helped me immensely in preparing these remarks. You see, I can't remember who the speaker was, much less what they had to say. And it remains to be seen if that's because the speaker was truly forgettable or because that graduation occurred a few millennia ago. <laughs> Either way, this liberating reflection allows me to proceed without fear of delivering any advice that might actually impede our bright future. <laughs> to my classmates, do you remember where you were when you got the news? It was only a few years ago we got the email welcoming us to the Harvard class of 2022. With nervous excitement, I scanned the list of names and ages of my soon-to-be classmates and quickly realized in horror that I might be so old that I'd have more in common with some of your parents than with my own classmates. <laughs> and as some might expect when you receive an acceptance letter from Harvard, I devoted the next three months to nonstop studying. Only. This time wasn't filled with facts such as the Krebs cycle, human anatomy, or even Bernoulli's principle. No, no, no. These months were inundated with memorizing statements such as YOLO, <laughs> figuring out who the Kardashians were and trying to keep up with them, <laughs> applying for a TikTok account, <laughs> and trying to revive my Instagram feed to make it look like it hadn't been dormant for many years. But all joking aside, as I scanned that list, these months truly were horrifying, wondering if I would ever fit in with my future classmates, all of whom had already made major impacts in their communities and across the world. However, there were a couple of achievements I knew I could rest on. I had already celebrated more birthdays than all of you, and I had likely held the record for most dirty diapers changed amongst our class. And some people say that wisdom comes with age. What I've realized is that I've just had a lot of opportunities to listen, observe, and experience. And there is a certain wisdom that's gained in these moments as I've collected lessons and experiences along the way. And I want to share a talk about success that I heard from one Army general I crossed paths with years ago. Reflecting on typical definitions of success, such as promotions, money, fame, power, 
or even academic prestige all fall short of a truly successful life. In fact, it is the people that matter most and your relationships which will determine success. I'll offer four groups of people you might measure yourself by in the years to come. First, when measuring success, I challenge to you, you to always think about your patients. Are you the provider that your patients will want to see again? Will they feel heard, cared for, truly understood when they leave your office? Will they recommend you to their friends and bring their loved ones to your practice? Next is to your coworkers. And I invite you to look to the left and to the right and to your coworkers who are gathered this day across the nation. When you've worked a 28 hour call shift, there's been nothing but pages and codes all night and you haven't had anything go your way. Are you going to shortcut this, the handoff, snap at your fellow residents, or be curt with the nurses? When you come on shift, will you be the doctor that everyone avoids or the one that they can't wait to see in the morning? Third is by your supervisors. I've heard it said that if your boss's job is done, then yours is also. Are you the person who will show up prepared, anticipating the work that needs to be done, looking ahead to the challenges of the day, and already developing a plan to overcome them? Will your attending or supervisor fight to have you on their service again? Lastly, and the single most important measure of success is by your family and those closest to you. Although it's hard to imagine right now, one day all of our careers will come to an end. Whenever that day comes for you, will you still have your family by your side? Will they be there beaming proudly as you hang up the white coat? This is a stressful, demanding job that lies ahead of us. I challenge you to prioritize your loved ones with the time that you do have and to put just as much deliberate care and thought into your home life as you do into your work life. And now I'd like to shift gears and offer us all a challenge. No matter what field you're about to step into, you play an integral role in treating the whole person. Behind every interaction is a story, a journey, a life. Even though we're headed into a business of science, technology, and art, ultimately, it's a business of human interaction. You see, for the last four years, and in some cases, our whole lives, this journey has been about investing in us. None of the professors came to teach for their own benefit. It was an investment in us. Our family, they didn't sacrifice for themselves. It was for us to get to this very moment. And the patients over the last four years certainly didn't need us to take an hour just to get a medical history. That was their investment in our lives and education. Today, all of that changes. Today, we transition from being the investment to being the provider. On a cold night in April of 2011, I was in Afghanistan where the hot day had given way to a clear and starry night. And it seemed like the desert temperature had dropped just as quickly as the sun did. And a young lieutenant was a fresh college graduate, 23 years old, leading 30 other soldiers on a security patrol, making sure that the evening stayed quiet. Unfortunately for him, that peaceful quiet was interrupted with a horrifyingly disorienting explosion as he stepped onto a landmine that cost him both of his legs. Thanks to modern medicine and some fast-acting medics, he was stabilized and evacuated, his life preserved. Now, I invite you to close your eyes and imagine that you are the emergency medicine physician receiving this patient from the field or the general surgeon page to the trauma activation. Perhaps you're the orthopedist tasked with reconstructing his legs or the anesthesiologist on the other side of the curtain. You could be the plastic surgeon who's there for the countless reconstructive surgeries or in physical medicine and rehabilitation, encouraging this young man on his long journey of rehab as he learns to walk again. Perhaps you're the ENT or dentist dealing with the jaw that was shattered from the explosion the psychiatrist that helps him grapple with the PTSD and the nightmares that continue to haunt him long after the fact. Or perhaps you're the neurologist who's helping him with the phantom pain and the headaches that no one can explain. 
No matter the field you are about to enter, these interactions and so many more are critical to rebuilding a life. And while we all need the technical skills to treat the patient, true healing isn't complete without engaging the patient on an emotional level. This is the career we're about to engage in. We all bring experiences, emotions, and past lives into our work. And I challenge you to bring your whole self to fully engage and to heal the patient, but to also invest yourself in the person. This is where the fulfilling work is accomplished. So, while there are many sleepless nights, countless hours of hard work, and difficult situations in front of us, I want to remind you of the incredible privilege it is to be on this journey. Today we transition to investing in others. Never forget that you're treating the, the patient, but you're healing the person. Reflect on how you will measure success and let those principles guide you when the times get tough. It's truly been an honor to live and learn alongside of you. To the class of 2022, thank you and congratulations.